Hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, my name is Drew, and I'm here from uh, sunny San Antonio on behalf of Rackspace, and we are going to be talking a little bit more digital transformation today. I'm joined uh, with a fellow racker. Uh, we've got Adam Oaks, who's been. Uh, know, how long have you been a racker? Introduce yourself a little bit. Uh, sure. I've I've been a racker almost six years now, something like that, getting, getting close to that. Uh, primarily, I've worked in the productivity software suite here at Rackspace, so a lot of stuff with email and collaboration and stuff like that. And I've been with uh, our Office 365 team for about two years now. Very, very cool. And I got to know you through our social enablement program. So uh, we've been intending to get you on here for a while. And uh, we saw a blog post that you did a while back. And with all the digital transformation talk that's been going on, it seems like now is the time. So glad to uh, glad to have you, and glad to get the chance to uh, get this conversation uh, rolling. Um, so you you put together a little a, a kind of an outline of some of the highlights, some of the, the big points that small businesses should be considering when talking about uh, adopting an Office three sixty five approach and so you went through some of the typical challenges that customers have with um, with the office suite and then also um, what you can benefit from by uh, shifting into that 365 model um, why don't you uh, kind of give us the high level and then we'll dig down into your, uh, into your specific point. sure you know I, I think really right now if you're a small business that there hasn't really been a, a time like this specifically when you're looking at the product of office 365 um really anytime you've been manage, managing productivity software whenever you're going through and you're looking at what you can do inside of an email platform and a collaboration platform it's it's really kind of been uh a conversation of choices. If you're a big company and you have the money to spend, you can kind of put behind infrastructure and stuff to allow you to do a lot of really cool things. But if you're a smaller company, you just you didn't have that capital to be able to really invest in your own hardware and your own infrastructure to do some of the more unique or customizable things that you wanted. Um, so there were people out there that kind of did what they could to help fill the space and you know bring some of the more enterprise level software to smaller companies, but they had to do it in a limited way because they couldn't really cater their offering to each individual user they had to kind of do it in a one size fits all here you get this but you, you fit into kind of this pattern and really office 365 has kind of changed the game for that they've really gone through and spent a lot of time developing to where this is where microsoft sees their future going is, is stuff in the cloud and you can even kind of look at some of the development that they're doing and some of their dedicated hardware and it's really more emulating what they're doing in the clouds so or rather than the cloud lagging behind and trying to emulate what they've done on servers it's the other way around to where the interfaces of the new software that's coming out for even the enterprise level servers looks almost identical to the stuff that you're doing inside of the cloud. And so specifically for a small business, it's it's a wonderful time because you can go through and you can invest without this huge amount of capital that you would have had to in the, fa in the past, but get this really robust set of services and offerings that you just didn't have available to you before. Yeah, it seems like the, the BYOD world really impacted a lot of companies. And when you had um, big enterprises dealing with who have brought their own, um, got an iPhone, and I understand that you're a BlackBerry only company back in the day, but this is the tool I want to use. It really forced a lot of people to rethink, especially at Microsoft. Uh, oh, yeah, no, for sure. Focused on the enterprise space. And that's really ended up being yep. beneficial. They found that to, to switch gears, um, and, and their whole approach has is really um, gone from big licenses, hardware, all of that stuff. Um, really to being a user-friendly, uh, individual-specific uh, focus. Yeah, they actually even have a term for it at Microsoft that uh, you'll hear them throw around. And it's it's a term that I think is pretty easy to misunderstood until you really get it explained to you. Uh, Microsoft says that they are a mobile-first company now. Um, and when I first heard that, I was like, okay, well, that means they care about stuff on mobile devices first. Um, but that's not really what they're actually trying to imply. Um, whenever you hear someone from Microsoft or someone from the community talk about mobile-first, what it means is they realize that you know five years ago, there was a pretty big disconnect in towards doing something on your 
tablet PC or doing something on your phone and sitting down in front of your workstation working. And that disconnect made it so people weren't as efficient as they should be. And typically that disconnect came from the fact that they would spend a lot of time and development hours into developing this awesome application for your computer that could do all these fun things. And there were just limitations when you're trying to develop the same thing for a mobile platform. So when you hear Microsoft talk about the ideology of mobile first, what it actually means is they basically just develop the mobile platforms first. They spend the hours with their developers putting together that piece of software. So then when they're going through and they're developing the applications that will go on the computers themselves, they try to emulate as much as they can on what they did in the mobile platform. So what that really does is gives a much more uniform experience, whether you're sitting in front of your computer or in the airport on your tablet or, you know, just quickly going through and replying to something on your phone. It makes it so that the experience, regardless of the platform you're on, is much more uniform and something that you just didn't have before until you had to have a company like Microsoft, which, let's be really really kind of controls the software of productivity right now. You had to have a company like then really adjust how they went through the development phases itself. And by doing that, they've really kind of refocused the the what they were doing and refocused their efforts to make it so that you were more efficient regardless what platform you're on. Yeah, absolutely. I know one of the one of the frustrations we have is, you know, setting out of office while you're away from your phone and away from your computer and where is that even? How do I find it? And those kinds of problems, you know, you can do it. There's a robust enough tool that you've used over and over. But uh, UX is a big piece of that, understanding kind of where everything is. But then feature management is that other big piece of the conversation that's more accessible. For sure. Well, cool. Let's uh, let's get into that email thing a little bit more. Um, we talked a little bit about some of the some of the concerns that you have between. Um, administrative control and cost and all that. So let's talk about um, about how 365 can really help uh, solve some of those problems and the decision you have to force in. Sure. So I, I think probably the first thing, and like you said, I already kind of alluded to it a little bit, but I think this is kind of a foundation of what's really making Office 365 become such a dominant player in the market. And, you know, it's one of those things that we internally at Rackspace see it as a huge future for us inside of the productivity suite. So a lot of our um, man hours, a lot of our development is going towards the product. And there's a reason for that. Um, I kind of mentioned, as we were talking a little bit earlier, you were basically forced to make a choice couple years ago. Um, you either had to invest a lot of capital, spin up a whole server, and spin up you know, your own exchange environment, so that way you could go through and add levels of control to it. And by doing that, you're talking about you know, the cost to maintain a server itself, plus you know, the risks that come if you're having that server that you're maintaining. And then you're also talking about um, all of the bandwidth to keep it up and running, and the bandwidth to you know, have everything that you need. Or you had to go for you know an a la carte model to where you're buying a very box set of what you're doing in your email platform. Um, updates to the servers only really came once every three years. So you know you look at the legacy versions of Exchange. You have Exchange 2003, 2007, 2010, 2013, 2016, and that's how Microsoft software has worked for you know, over a decade at this point. And so you really didn't expect any major updates or any major feature changes to come out until that next major version of the software came. Um, Office 365 changes that game. Um, Office 365 is what they refer to as an evergreen solution. And by being an evergreen solution, it's like the tree, right? It basically means it's always changing. Um, so they're always coming out with new features. They're always developing the platform with the idea of, of benefiting the user. And as we kind of alluded to at the start, really what's nice here is it's actually fully available to small businesses. Each individual tenant, which is kind of how Microsoft deals with their accounts in Office 365, has full admin access to do PowerShell commands on the back end, has the ability to integrate with an Active Directory environment, however big or small you want it to be, has the ability to pull in some pretty awesome third-party integrations, has the ability to set up journaling rules, has the ability to set up exchange connectors. These are the type of stuff that you couldn't do whenever you're on a hosted platform, because how host Hosted platforms work, including Rackspace's hosted platform, was you basically had you know the employees of the company setting up this giant exchange environment that spanned hundreds of servers and had hundreds of thousands of mailboxes. But because of that, you couldn't give PowerShell admin access to a random customer because they would have PowerShell access to every other customer that existed. And by Microsoft redesigning how they did the software itself and they did the applications themselves, they were able to basically silo the customers in a good way to where they could still give customers the level 
level of access that you'd only have if you paid for that full server and deployed yourself and have the ability to do some of that you know higher end customization higher end specifics that you just straight up couldn't do before as a smaller company with office 365 that that door's been opened and especially if you're a smaller company but want to do some of the more advanced technological pieces you really for the first time ever in the email world have the ability to do that and affordably it's not just the ability is now available it's the ability is available at a at a reasonable price one that can uh, be accessible to anybody and owning that hardware like you mentioned has some uh, some management overhead cost and then keeping up with it and making sure that email is always running and that your business is able to move forward that business continuity piece um you don't realize how important it is until there's a problem and then you hear nothing <laughs> but hey how come i can't get my email yeah e email is one of those things everyone just expects to work and when it's not working it's Business it's not happy times and no one yeah nothing gets done because that becomes the sole focus of everyone is hey i've got I've got work to do and i can't i can't function without my email i don't know either that's my to-do list or that's my um that's how i keep all of my everything straight that's why i know um how I know what to do next and all that business. Um, it, it can be a really big, uh, really big hindrance to your productivity for, as a business if that email comes to a grinding halt. So not only is it expensive to own the hardware and to maintain it, it's very expensive if you have to do the work to, to revive yourself out of an issue. That yeah, and I, I don't know how everyone else feels about it. Don't get me wrong. I'm I'm confident in my own abilities as a tech, uh, but I feel a little bit more confident in Microsoft running that that hardware for me. They guarantee a 99.99% uptime, and basically since I've been managing this, I haven't seen a major outage, which has been a little over two years. Uh, and on top of that, um, outside of the 99.99% uptime, it really allows people like myself and people like IT admins out there, especially when we're talking about the small business world, right? So you're going to have people that are IT admins that are probably wearing many hats besides just IT admin. They're probably not just doing that. And historically, if they wanted some of these more, you know, enterprise options, they would have to be doing security updates on servers and have to be, you know, checking for vulnerabilities and have to be doing all the basic stuff that comes along with server maintenance. Since Microsoft takes that off your plate, it really frees up some of that time to be done on stuff that genuinely adds value to the business. So rather than just doing security updates and rather just doing patches, you have the ability to really understand the technologies that that Office 365 has to offer. And, you know, if applied correctly, can genuinely increase the productivity of you and your peers and of the people doing it at your company. There might be a feature set or there might be a product inside of Office 365 that really has the ability to transform what a company does day to day that before they wouldn't have had the bandwidth to even try. And now giving the guy who's kind of running IT a little bit of his time back gives him the ability to go through and build a governance plan around what needs to do and explore those new technologies. And one of the awesome things about 365, especially for small businesses, is chances are companies come in because they want their email on the cloud or they want thing X, but 365 is something like 20 different applications. And so you pay for one, you pay for them all. And so it's one of those things that now that you're having the ability to free up a little bit of your time to, you know, actually look into what's going on and build out adoption plans for your users, you can really drive towards, okay, well, there's this OneDrive thing that's going to allow us to do file collaboration. We're paying for it. Is there a way that we can distribute that and make our users more efficient by having this cloud storage solution? And chances are the answer is yes. And if you have the bandwidth to be able to go and do that, it's just an, another one up for small businesses in a way that they really wouldn't have had the ability to do before. Yeah, there's definitely a lot to be said for freeing up resources uh, in man hours when you're a small business and you've got many hat solution where you've got people who are in the middle of one thing that's business critical and they get interrupted by another thing that's business critical. Um, you're, you're causing them to make that determination of, you know, where's my time best spent? When you can give somebody clear focus and say, look, this is all we need to do. Uh, that is huge, both for their satisfaction. It makes them more comfortable doing their job and makes them have more satisfaction day in and day out, which is good for retention. But it also means that you have people who are doing a very good job executing for the vision of the company. And so to be able to provide that focus out of those man hours uh, through offloading a lot of that extra work and a lot of that potential interruption of, down. Um, that could be a really big uh, differentiator as well for your business so that you can stay uh, locked in to where it is you're headed. Yeah, and I think one of the things that kind of plays onto that as well 
I think it's unrealistic to sit here and expect everyone to know everything that they can do in Office 365. But the nice thing is when you look at the, the product set, um, one, they are constantly updating it, but that means, you know, there's potential new features you can get on. But there's also people like Rackspace in the mix, right? And there's people like um, what we do. We have award-winning support, and that's kind of what, what we're known for. Anyone who's worked with Rackspace before, we kind of go out of our way to hire people that genuinely want to help and that are experts in their product. And, you know, it's probably a little daunting to sit there and hear, oh, okay, you know, there's 20 applications that you could use, and it might be a complete solution that you haven't heard of before. But the nice thing is, like, you know, the people that we have in our support staff, it's available 24-7, 360 just like so many other Rackspace products, are genuinely experts that just work in Office 365. So especially when you're looking at the small businesses where you know maybe you're the CEO of the company and you're the IT guy and you're the marketing guy and you're the sales guy. And you know that, that can happen all the time. Well, you can have a little bit of assurance in knowing that, well, if you can go through and partner with a company like Rackspace, we're going to bring that level of expertise. And our goal really when we're working with customers is for them to basically see us as extensions of their own team. You know, if you go through and you can hire Rackspace, Space. It's like, you know, offboarding 50 high-level experts in Office 365 that you can pick up the phone and call. And you know, that's not a resource that you potentially be able to, you know, handle on your own. But being able to partner with a company like Rackspace that does this day in and day out and helps other customers that have been in your shoes and doing the same things that you're doing, it really allows us to work with our partners and work with our customers to figure out solutions that work well for them. And it's it really gives us, you know... Uh, a stickiness inside of the offering because once well, customers come in and kind of realize the type of support and help that they can get everything from, hey, I can't get this set up on my phone to, hey, I'm trying to figure out the best way to use this software. No questions too big or too small for us and something that you know people genuinely enjoy helping. That's kind of why we hired them. And so being able to partner with a company like Rackspace whenever you're trying to you know adopt into this big world that is Office 365 with all these applications, it kind of gives you that expert you know close that you can call in and that you can lean on and not have to worry about you know, okay, well, now I have more time, but how the hell do I learn about all this stuff? And it kind of frees up your time a little bit to know that, well, you have people that already know about it that you can rely on that have your best interest at heart. Absolutely. And in the same way that it's really useful to be able to task your people with things that they can focus on, having a partner who's focused on the same thing day in and day out means they get really good at doing what they do. <laughs> Yeah. So you're, you're getting, it's like you want a knee surgeon that is like an amazing knee surgeon. That's all they do and because you want someone with lots and lots of practice who's going to be expert and see anything that might um, be slightly strange and have done enough to know how to handle that situation. Um, it's hugely valuable to leave your people focused on what's new business critical and to have a partner who's got that same level of focus on those components that they're taking on their plate. So um, one of the really exciting pieces of of rack spaces that we allow our rackers to be really, really good at a specific set of things. And as they deal with more and more customers, they see all of these strange permutations that might uh, rear their heads. And then when a customer comes forward with a problem, odds are very good. We've seen it multiple times. We've handled it multiple times. We know the best way. To it. And that's yeah. a huge benefit. Yeah, I, I think you hit the nail on the head, too, when, when you were talking about, you know, leaving your own employees or yourself even, and a lot of times the small businesses to focus on what's going on. Bottom line, you know your business better than we're ever going to. Being able to offboard the day-to-day -day technical stuff, being able to offboard the problem so you don't have to spend cycles, um, you know, going through and trying to Google stuff or, you know, God forbid, having to call up through Microsoft support and go through the, the normal channels that you go through there. Being able to have a reliable partner that you can call and offboard that frees up your time to really focus on the stuff that brings value and brings return directly back into your business. And the nice thing about Office 365 is it's not just like any other technology set to where, okay, well, I don't have to worry about the server for a little bit. I can focus on the business. Oftentimes, what Office 365 is, is bringing to you will allow you to, you know, put a return on the investment in the business in a more direct way because like we kind of talked about, there's probably many different technology stacks inside of 365 that can genuinely make you more efficient, can genuinely make you more collaborative with your, your peers, more collaborative inside of your system. Um, one, I think the really unique things with Rackspace, and this is something that, um, you know, you kind of talked about, I did the blog post, this is something um, that will be a good example to talk about how quickly Office 365 is changing. And this is something that will also kind of highlight some of the potential value that Rackspace can bring. So since I wrote that blog post, which was in December, they actually came out with a new feature that is specifically targeted at small market businesses. It's a, it's a feature called Outlook Person Manager. Um, you can kind of think of it 
um, abstractly as almost like a contact list on steroids. How it's really designed is for small companies that don't have the ability to afford their own CRM software. So you go out there and you try to buy something like Salesforce, that's not a cheap, cheap expense. And a lot of companies that are just starting off the ground or companies, you know, maybe you're out there and you have a, a lawn service crew or you have, you know, a babysitting company or you have, you know, a house cleaning company. You probably don't have the capital to invest in a full on CRM software. Microsoft understands this. So one of the features that they've literally released in the last quarter was this thing called Outlook Person Manager. And what it basically does is if you go through and you find someone in your contact list that you've been communicating with, it opens up another panel on the side of the screen in the navigation window that highlights all the last communications that you've had with the user. It highlights any upcoming meeting events that you have with them and anything that you've seen. It also has a separate task or note section that you can fill out notes for. So gone potentially are the days we have to go through and try to search for the person's email and figure out oh well, when we was talking about it you know how did he spend the time trying to dig out well i know he asked me to do something or i know it was something there if you just find the person inside of your actual outlook itself with the newest version of 365 it will actually surface all the communications and all the different stuff you had going on with that person so it's basically a miniature version of crm to allow you to stay more efficient more organized as a company and something that was specifically targeted at small market businesses and that's kind of cool coming from company like Microsoft, which is big and expansive and has all these hundreds of thousands of plus user customers, but they still understand that there's a real need there. And if people are already sitting there and working out of their outlook and, and working out of their email, because email is so critical to business, well, there's a way that they can actually make them more efficient, potentially put time back and, and help them reinvest into their own, own company. And stuff like that is just, it's awesome. And it kind of shows the power of what Microsoft and 365 as a whole is trying to do to really help out small co companies, because they realize for the first time they they're really providing a, a software set that really changes the game for them. Well, the more businesses can uh, continue succeeding using these tools, the more the companies providing these tools are going to succeed. So it's a exactly it's a win win for everybody, um, and certainly it seems to be the direction things are going at a quicker and quicker pace. So now would be a great time um, as you're looking at the way your small business can transform digitally and get more value out of these mobile tools and out of these. SaaS products and, and make your workforce workforce more forceful and be able to actually uh, deliver more with the time that they have. Um, now is really a great time to be doing that and to be looking at ways to do that. And Office 365 is just one of the many tools out there and one of the ways that Rockspace is looking to help our customers really uh, derive more and more value out of the tools that they had already been using, but in a new way that, that really changes the game on how they can one of the things that I really like about working at Rackspace, and you know, hopefully this doesn't give it away any of our secret sauce to people, but um, we are really set up as a reoccurring revenue model. And you know, it's kind of weird to talk about why I like Rackspace and talk about it in a revenue stance. But if you've worked at other IT companies or seen other stuff in the mix, it's very much about getting that initial contract. And so there's all this effort put up front in the sales process and trying to make the customer, you know, buy into the idea of what you're doing. But once you have that contract, you're essentially moving forward. Um, because of the model that Rackspace is and and what we're really trying to do is set up these long-term partnership with companies. We really want to become that extension of your company. We really want to partner with you for long-term success. That is entirely how our business model is focused. It's around not only bringing customers in, but once they're there, really making them happy and really showing them the value that we can bring by adding fanatical support and the value that we can bring by becoming, you know, that, that trusted partner of customers as they're going into this technology set, specifically going into this technology set in the cloud that's probably, you know, a little bit unknown or a little bit scary for some customers to go into. But because that is a focus of our business model, really from the ground up, you see decisions made to really try to provide the best support we can possibly supply and, and try to hire people that genuinely want to help and want to do what's right for people's companies themselves. They're not after the next contract with you. They're after making you happy and making you content in what you're doing and getting the help that you need. And it really you know, fills my bucket uh, on my side whenever I'm going through and I'm working with customers and, and doing stuff that I feel like makes them happy and makes them look good to their own bosses. Because at the end of the day, that's all we want, right? Absolutely. Definitely want to help uh, deliver success. And when we see, especially on the small business side, I, I've worked with various uh, degrees of our customers uh, in various parts of the business. And when I moved away from the small medium-sized business world and I was in the enterprise space, I thought, you know, the, the pressure's really on now because the money's bigger. And I realized that it's it's not quite the same thing. The, that in SMB, it's your livelihood is your business. It's, we've got to see, this is my dream and I want to see it succeed. And I've got 
um, everything riding on the success of this thing. And so in situations where we're able to help customers uh, make the difference between, uh, you know, plateauing and continuing to grow or between health and, and sickness as far as a business goes, that's a huge win and feels great to be able to deliver at these inflection moments when you get a call from somebody and say, this has got to go well. And if it doesn't go well, I don't know what I'm going to do. And, and then you get them through it and they see the success of that opportunity. Nothing feels as good as, as seeing people who have put it all out there um, really realize the, the full benefit of that um, that partnership that they put their trust in you as a company and you as an individual. It's a really, really exciting thing. So, Couldn't agree more. Well, Adam, do you have anything else you want to share on uh, on this subject? I mean, honestly, from from a high level, my, my biggest advice to people, go out there and check it out. I think we're very, as people, especially when we're, when we're dealing with other parts of technologies, we like what we're used to. We like what's what's comfortable out there. And specifically, you know, this is I'm, I'm a nerd. This is this is where I work. So this is kind of my expertise. Um, but the world of the productivity software has changed a lot in the last couple of years. And specifically, when you're looking around some of the stuff that Office 365 can do, it's really transforming the way that a lot of companies can collaborate. Um, but honestly, you know, unselfishly, like go out there and just see what's out there. Maybe maybe Office 365 isn't going to be right for you. Maybe Google Apps is, or maybe some of the new technologies have that are coming out, some of the, some of the free ones that are there. Um, but regardless, it's an extremely exciting time in the industry and with everything that's going on and some of the collaboration. And I think it's just picking up steam. You're seeing purchases from Microsoft for stuff like LinkedIn, where I think you're going to see um, more developments along the lines of you know almost personal CRM software, you know, attaching you to other people that you work with and other vendors and other businesses. And so I just encourage customers out there that you know maybe have been thinking about it for a while and weren't sure. You know, do a little bit of research. You know, give us a call and talk to us. Um, go out there and see what's out out there. Go out there and see what you can do. Because once you get moved over and once you start finish uh, experiencing some of the new stuff that the cloud has to offer and some of the new stuff that some of these really awesome, robust productivity suites has to offer, um, I imagine you're not going to be disappointed. It really opens up a world of new technologies and, and new features that you probably didn't have before. And you know what? If if it's too much for you and you don't want to use them, that's fine. But having them there is always better than you know having limitations and not being able to do certain things. You know, maybe you're going to sign a contract a year from now that has you working with a bank and they want encrypted email. Well, that might be a problem in your current platform. That's literally a feature set that you turn on with a radio button in 365. And having the flexibility and stuff to do that is just, it's awesome. So I just, I encourage people, regardless of what you're thinking, go out there and see what's in the industry. It's a really exciting time for the productivity world as a whole. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us because again, we're, what, what we kind of, you know, get pride in and what, what kind of, you know, wakes us up in the morning is really helping customers, you know, succeed for themselves. Because ultimately, if that's happening, as you kind of mentioned the same way with Microsoft, that benefits us. So we want nothing more than to help you guys succeed, help you guys grow in your businesses and, and really help take some of that work off your plate. Absolutely. And as you mentioned as well, things are always changing and growing. So what, what may be the case now is not necessarily to be the case tomorrow. And the last time you checked, it, it's probably already changed uh, since then. So, um, find out where you can uh, continue that iterative improvement of your business. And this may be um, a major step forward, not just a small iterative step. So that's fantastic. Thank you for your service to our customers, Adam, and for um, enlightening us a little bit on where um, small businesses can be improving their digital approach. Uh, we're uh, going to keep doing these kinds of uh, live content as, uh, as we go along. So stay tuned to the Rackspace uh, YouTube channel. Thanks for uh, for joining, and we'll see you on the other side. Thanks, guys. Bye.